Well, friends, uh, when I started ShareTrek a um, couple of years ago, it's actually two years now since we started approximately, um, we had very, very few subscribers and the growth was a bit slow. And we had some really good subscribers from then who are still with us now uh, on this channel and have been great supporters for the channel. And one of them is Ishkadesh. And Ishkadesh had made a request uh, to cover repair therapeutics and... Um, he made the request almost uh, seven to ten days ago, but it was difficult for me to make the video because uh, I didn't know anything about this company or their technology. Uh, and also, as you know, I'm making around 14 to 16 videos a week. So it was a bit hectic, but uh, today I was able to complete my work on repair therapeutics and this is the first cut. And um, uh, this video is uh, for Ishkadish. And if any of you find this particular company interesting, uh, that would be wonderful. Please put in the comments and I may start covering it on a regular basis. Looks like a very interesting company. Uh, they look pretty good to me. So with that said, let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. So, Repair Therapeutics, uh, its sticker symbol is RPTX. It was founded in 2016 and is headquartered in St. Laurent, Quebec, in Canada. Through various funding rounds and an IPO, they raised around $251.7 million. And the IPO happened on 18th uh, of June in 2020, and they raised around $220 million. The IPO share price was $20 per share. Later on, I'll show you the price chart and we'll track the history of the pricing. And uh, you can see how attractive or unattractive the price is. The closing share price on 22nd of November 2023 was $4.88. This indicates a huge drop from the IPO price. But friends, what is new? Most of our genomic companies in our watch list have also fallen like that or even worse than that. And even if you take the case of Illumina, which is quite a big accomplished company with products, it has dropped from uh, huge numbers to uh, below $100. So uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't blame Repair for the drop in price as much as I would blame Illumina. So they have a discovery platform called uh, SnipRx. It's all one word, S-N-I-P-R with a small x. Rx is usually for prescription, the short form. So SNP Rx uh, is, the, is uh, I think they have patented it or trademarked it. And they describe it as a genome-wide uh, uh, CRISPR-enabled discovery platform using which they claim to have systematically analyzed genomic data from over 60,000 tumor samples and identified an initial set of clinically relevant genomic alterations that are linked to genomic instability and claim that those are present in 30% of tumors and are largely mutually exclusive. I need to read up more to understand the platform, but um, I think that it fo it's focusing on tumors and markers. Uh, at this point of time, that's my uh, understanding. And their synthetic lethal or SL approach uh, involves preventing DNA repair and allowing damaged cells to die and thus arrest cancer. At least that is my current understanding because I have just started reading up on that technology. I'll provide an update later if anything changes. Their pipeline consists of 15 candidates, of which six are in advanced clinical trials, with four which are in initial stages of clinical trials, with over three in uh, preclinical trials. Now, um, I think we need to understand the DNA repair mechanism before we proceed further. So I'll explain it to you. And I'll also try to explain the role that ATR plays in it because the um, majority of their candidates in the pipeline are ATR suppressors or ATR inhibitors. And uh, all those candidates are in partnership with Roche. An ATR inhibitor is a type of drug or compound that targets and inhibits the activity of, activity of the protein uh, ATR. ATR is a key enzyme involved in the cellular response to uh, DNA damage. Uh, it plays a crucial role in detecting and repairing damaged DNA, helping to maintain genomic stability. When DNA damage occurs, cells activate a complex network of signaling pathways known as the DNA damage response or DDR. ATR is a central component of this response and it is activated in response to single-strand DNA breaks and other forms of DNA damage. 
Once activated, ATR initiates a cascade of events that leads to cell cycle arrest, DNA repair, or if the damage is too severe, to programmed cell death or apoptosis. In certain situations, such as in cancer cells with defects in other uh, DNA repair mechanisms, inhibiting ATR can be a strategy to selectively target and kill cancer cells. By blocking ATR activity, the normal DNA damage response is impaired, leading to genomic instability and cell death of the cancer cell. Eight of their therapies, as I mentioned, are ATR inhibitors, and they're all in clinical trials. Uh, seven of them are in advanced stages of clinical trials, while one is in the early stages. Uh, further, there is another uh, factor known as PKMYT1, also known as MYT1. It's a protein kinase that plays a role in the regulation of the cell cycle. In the context of cancer research, PKMYT1 uh, inhibitions is being explored as a potential strategy to target cancer cells, combining PKMYT1 inhibitors with other agents that introduce DNA damage or inhibit DNA repair mechanisms may enhance the effectiveness of cancer treatment by disrupting the normal regulation of the cell cycle. Uh, PKMYT1 uh, inhibitors can contribute to the selective killing of rapidly dividing cancer cells. The combination of ATR inhibitors and PKMYT1 inhibitors is an area of interest in cancer research. ATR inhibitors can in induce damage of DNA, and by inhibiting PKMYT1, researchers aim to prevent cell cycle arrest and promote cell death uh, in cancer cells with damaged DNA. It seems like the jiu-jitsu approach in fighting cancer. So jiu-jitsu is a kind of uh, martial arts where uh, it's like uh, judo, I think, where you use the weight of your opponent and the force of your opponent uh, to uh, to their disadvantage. You take advantage of your opponent's, uh, opponent's strength and move in such a manner that the opponent defeats themselves with their own strength. So I think uh, what uh, Repair is trying to do with its uh, technology is something like a jujitsu uh, approach to fighting cancer and to use the body's own strength, uh, which cancer was using to divide uh, against cancer. So that's how I look at it. If I change my opinion, I'll make another vi uh, video in the future uh, to provide clarifications. In their Q3 2023 earnings, they reported that their phase one mythic clinical trial produced promising results and that they have cash of 250 million and a cash runway of uh, uh, enough money to run them uh, into 2026. So that's a, a pretty decent um, uh, cash runway. Given the collaborations that they have, they are going to get milestone payments as well. Uh, so uh, I think it looks good at this point of time. Uh, there, there shouldn't be any equity dilution, at least in the near term. And their general and admin expenses remain flat as that is a good thing in my opinion because they are controlling their costs, they are running a tight shift. And um, all their ATR inhibitor candidates are in partnership with Roche from whom they will receive milestone payments. And friends, here I see a big risk as well. I might be wrong, but I think when you put so much of your uh, 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 resources uh, into a particular target, then if the target fails, then everything fails with it. Uh, that's my uh, fear. So I think they have done uh, good enough research and because their uh, clinical trial data has shown promising results, I'm hoping that that's not the case. And in any, any, any way, they are partnered with Roche, so there is going to be a sharing of the risk. So that's how I would look at it. They also have multiple undisclosed targets in the discovery stage in partnership with BMS. So we'll get to know more about it as they start finalizing targets. And last week, Repair announced that Two additional candidates, RP1664 and RP3467, are likely to enter early stage clinical development in 2024. Following this news, shares of the company surged around 34.2% in the past week, compared with the industry's 1.7% raise. And I'm going to show that to you in the TradingView platform. Let's go there now. Well, here we are in the TradingView platform looking at the price chart for repair therapeutics. And as you can see, I plotted a bull channel out here, a support line. And if I was to drag this out from here, uh, you would see that um, we have at least two touch points on this. So I would consider this to be a, a reasonable bull channel. And um, uh, I'm just uh, amazed to see how much this share has fallen. Uh, as I told you, the IPO price was $20. And uh, since then, it achieved a... Uh, 
all time high of around forty six dollars and fifty cents or something in that range. Uh, that was on 7th of January 2021 and since then it has fallen significantly so that um, uh, on the 23rd of November uh, it closed at $4.88 and as you can see the uh, raise is very steep in the prices and this is basically because of the news a couple of weeks ago uh, that uh, two of their therapies are going into the early stage clinical trial in 2024. Uh, Q1 2024. So that's what caused this uh, spike. And I b believe that those who had bought the shares um, somewhere around, say, 20th of October onwards, uh, all the way down to 27th of October, they are looking at a profit of around 30 plus percent. So I wouldn't blame them for wanting to realize the profit and take the money out. So you can see that it, there has been a choppy action here with a bit of sales in between and then again a jump. So this is the general trend for um, uh, price on its way up and um, I am hopeful that this trajectory for the bull channel will um, tend to be at least 45 degree or less so that it is sustainable. Anything more than that uh, would kind of uh, reflect some kind of a hype and uh, may not be reliable. Their MACD is bullish and uh, we also have uh, momentum that's just about average. Let me look at the weekly chart and see if I can see any other patterns. So if I look at the weekly chart, we can very clearly see that we have this bull channel which has got one, two, three points of uh, three touch points out here. So it's looking good there. But in the weekly chart, we can see that uh, momentum is flat. When momentum is flat and MACD is bearish, uh, the share doesn't go much higher. So hopefully, when we look at the daily chart, what we are seeing out there uh, is potential improvement uh, in the prices. And I do not see any um, uh, negative variance or positive variance uh, between the RSI and uh, the price. So there is no clue which can confirm to me that the prices will continue to keep going up. So with that said, I think that's all I have uh, to talk about with regard to uh, repair therapeutics. I'd also like to point out very briefly that if you look at uh, NASDAQ, I'm taking QQQ as a proxy for NASDAQ. And uh, we are not sure whether this cup and handle pattern will mature because we have a huge area of resistance out here and RSI is overbought uh, even though MACD is bullish. So we'll have to see what happens here. Wherever the overall market goes, uh, I think that's where uh, we'll find our uh, uh, repair therapeutics move. So if the overall market declines, I think repair will also come down. But I suspect that uh, even if it comes down, it will be uh, plus or minus 20% of uh, $3.11. And uh, that's the range I think it will be in if the market goes pear-shaped. If not, I'm expecting it to stay above this uh, line of support. Well, friends, that's all I got on repair. And Ishkadish, I hope uh, you like what you saw here. And uh, probably I gave you some answers or some information that you didn't have before. Uh, if you have any more questions on repair, please do not hesitate to put it in the comments below. And I'll try and see if I can uh, get it for you. I don't think repair is a genomic company. Uh, I suspect they are more of a molecules company. Um, I have to read a little bit more. I might stand corrected on that. If they're a genomic company, I don't mind putting them in our genomic watch list and start covering them on a regular basis and put more efforts in understanding their platform and technology uh, so that the rest of our community can um, uh, take advantage of having one more company in the uh, watch list. With that, I'd like to end this video here. Bye for now.